Hello and welcome to the review of the Star Wars 1-6 scale plastic model kit Stormtrooper by Bandai. Previously I've reviewed that many other smaller 1-12 scale model kits including the Stormtrooper and other stuff and um, just for comparison the box sizes you see the height is literally twice of these but the thickness is also let's see a little bit one and 20% thicker than your regular size one so far the only other ones 12 scale model kit is the Yoda model kit and yes this is a big Stormtrooper and it cost me only 348 uh, Hong Kong dollars from uh, Fook Lee. I've seen some shampoo in Hong Kong and they have pretty good prices on a lot of things. So um, They're also pretty knowledgeable with spray paints. In fact, um, some of the spray paints that I bought from them, uh, the store keep, actually recommend that I get a different color and it worked out great. So thanks to Fook Lee and their cat overlords. <laughs> if you go to their Facebook page, their cats are so funny all the time. So yeah, pretty cool. Uh, so inside the box it tells you the exact size of Stormtrooper you're going to get. And yeah, this is pretty cool. One six scale Stormtrooper. That's awesome. His feet tend to appear. Comes with a stand. And uh, the artwork is also very nice. Bandai model kits have always have this nice artwork on the front. And on this side here it shows you different poses and different accessories you get inside the box. So, unlike the smaller, smaller model kits, these boxes do not have any tape on the side. Uh, protecting it, whatever. So you get the actual instruction booklet. The smaller kits have a long sheet of paper that you just, you just fold out, but here it's actually a stapled booklet because it's much bigger. And yeah, at first glance I thought, I was thinking that maybe this would literally be identical to smaller ones, but just a bigger scale. But no, actually on closer inspection, a lot of these pieces are actually different to the, uh, the smaller one. And so that's pretty cool. So you get a lot of boxes here, you actually have a different figure stand that looks far more sturdy and durable than the smaller figures. You have a pretty big Star Wars logo and sticker there, and these pieces actually have a few differences. Quick glance in the uh, instruction booklet, and I've not also noticed quite a few differences. And I imagine that the big one here would be much more sturdy uh, than the smaller ones. And um, on the back of the booklet, there's the paint guide and decal application guide. So depending on if you use decals or not, or paint up. On the bottom there, it shows you what paints you have to buy if you want to paint it exactly like in the show and the movies. And yeah, this looks pretty cool. Um, I will say though, I'm a little bit concerned about this because the head looks way bigger than the... Uh, looks a bit too big for the proportions for the body. So... Yeah, that head looks a little bit off, but it's probably just the shading colors. I, I'm sure because the small ones are fine. So I'm sure once this thing's built, it will look as cool as he does on this cover. There, can't wait to build this guy. And yes, that other stormtrooper box is a brand new stormtrooper kit. I've been buying a lot of these smaller stormtrooper kits because they're really cheap. They're like 120 for a stormtrooper, and you can ha never have too many stormtroopers. Um, so there will also be a few future videos where I just show different painted ones that I didn't follow like official looks and whatnot because I've repainted quite a few smaller Stormtrooper kits and painted a few of them in new colors so you can look forward to that on this channel. And there we go, he took about uh, I would say two hours to build them uh, just because that the model is actually quite different in a few places uh, compared to the 112 scale. Accessory wise is also a little bit different. We have the E11 blaster right here and it is slightly more detailed than the small model kit and just a small one you will need to paint this because it's just black plastic. Ammo clip comes out and this little scope attachment thing also comes out. But yes, very detailed, even feels detailed in the hand and this bottom piece right here, this little long piece at the bottom and that's actually a separate piece that you have to plug onto the gun so uh, you get to take that off and get a lot more painted detail going on underneath the uh, gap pistol which also comes with the small one uh, again it's just slightly a little bit more detailed than the small version the rifle here whoop, similar, just a little bit yeah this big rifle here this was pretty cool again it's a big, just a big chunk of black plastic but what the biggest difference this has to the small one is you actually take this bit off. So, see, it's actually uh, in the open position, in the sort of sniping position. That's pretty cool. I can't do that with the small one, so yeah, it's nice to actually have this piece on the big one. Uh, so you can actually do that. And uh, finally, you just have a bunch of 
hand attachments. Instead of having extra hands, uh, the only extra hand you get is a uh, single fist, right hand fist, no, left hand fist. It would be nice if you get two fists, that would be good. But uh, the other hands, let's see, currently on the Song Trooper right now, his right hand is a gun holding hand, and his left hand is a spray open. So you also have a spray open hand finger attachment for the hand, uh, a gun holding hand for the, for the left hand, just like that, just an attachment. Finally, you have a pointy finger attachment for the left hand. And the last piece of accessory is, of course, the figure stand, which is very different from the smaller one. If you remember the smaller figures, it just comes with a black plate where you just sort of stick the feet in and hope he stands there. And for the most part, they do. But here, you actually have a proper figure stand. There's a little hand clip there, so then you move his arms up, move the clip back. See, so move that. You can move that up. Get out of the way. And then there's actually a little plug in his butt. It's quite tight. It's a rubbery plastic grip. Yeah, that took a little bit to get. And now he's got a hole down there, which you can fill in with an extra plastic piece right there. Uh, I don't think it's too necessary. I think you can just go with the little hand clip on this to clip onto Stormtrooper. Because, you know, he can't stand on his own. He doesn't need it. It's just this, uh, because it's a big figure, this stand doesn't make it easier for you to post a bunch of these if you have you know, a bunch of them. Uh, what I don't like about the stand is that this base here rotates far too easily. Other than that, it does the job quite well. You also change the height of this by just plugging the attachment in different heights, different locks, and it actually has Star Wars molded into the plastic right there. So that's pretty cool. So there's actually a lot more detail going on on this model kit compared to the smaller one, and I was pleasantly surprised throughout the build process. First of all, the helmet is actually constructed in a much more complicated way compared to the small one. Uh, these grey bits here are actually a separate plastic that goes underneath the white, so the grey plastic is separate, whereas in the small one you have to paint the grey yourself. Uh, and then the eyepiece is uh, also transparent, just like the small one, and also tiny little extra bits of detail like underneath you can see the little black rim going around the bottom of the helmet to make it a bit more realistic, so that's pretty cool. And, uh, you know, the head can articulate it a lot better than the smaller one. He can actually go move his head like this, doop, 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 doop. <laughs> and forward too. Doop, doop. And yeah, it's actually a lot of articulation for this. And if you just have the helmet, this could be a product on its own for people who just like to buy helmets and stuff. So you got that going on. Uh, so that's pretty cool. And yeah, the uh, neck joint is far better hidden compared to the smaller model kit. Zoom out just a little bit and just uh, the shoulder pads actually remind me of the uh, SH Figure Arts shoulder pads where it can actually come out on the double hinge so that's pretty cool and the articulation here is uh, the same as um, the regular model kit. There is one extra rotation here top of this shoulder upper arm bit and the bottom so that's pretty cool you get extra articulation a lot more posability. The uh, torso is also really nicely done compared to the small one. The belt actually covers up a lot of the joints and makes it look a lot better. Oh, that came out a little bit. And uh, yeah, here's the back. You can see this piece is actually built out of a grey gray center with some white pieces on top. So there's already extra detail without painting. And um, oh yes, extra leg joint here. You got an extra rotating joint at the bottom of the feet. And the feet can actually extend just a little bit and we can push that back in. So that helps articulation a lot by doing that. So he also has extra toe joints, just a little bit, not too much, but it is there. So yeah, that means he's got a lot of extra articulation going on and that's pretty cool. There's one bit on the helmet that I don't like on the bigger one and that's this piece here. This little earpiece comes down here in a little sort of L shape. Uh, that's quite ugly because you can see this huge line going and that's not good. Uh, that's not on the small one, but it's on this one, and that's quite annoying. The figure also feels a lot heavier, uh, not just because he's bigger, but I mean he's heavier per scale. And he's got a lot more inside him that makes him feel a lot more secure than the small one. The model kit, Bandai model kits are great, but they often feel a little bit hollow, because, well, they are for the most part, model kits are hollow. That's why they're a lot cheaper than, you know, the, the uh, general figures, because they save a lot of plastic when uh, they make them. But uh, this one, they actually fill up a lot more of the gaps because it is bigger. They do realize that the bigger model kit does need 
a lot more plastic just to make it sure it doesn't fall to pieces. So this thing feels a lot more durable than the small one. Uh, something that's the same as the small one is that um, you see that the, the joints are still a little bit wobbly. Um, you know, it still shakes a little bit compared to you know, just regular figures, but that's fine for the model kit. If you don't like that, you can always get some super glue or something and just really tighten down all the joints. But again, you don't need glue to do anything from here. Uh, but it's just something you can do as an extra thing if you want to. Because he still has that, you know, that model sound of the plastic when you're moving him around. So in terms of articulation, let's go through that quickly. So the head's got that double neck joint, pretty cool. And like I said, it's got the shoulder pads can come down. So he's got this whole ball socket joint for the upper shoulder. And you move his arms forward quite a bit in full rotation. Uh, full rotation here and another full rotation here. A double elbow joint. Uh, with hand on the peg and swivel, uh, ball joint, ball joint for the torso, the double ball joints there, but it is a little bit limited due to the belt and the shape of the armor piece. Leg can come down just a little bit, just like the small one. Full rotation here, rotate, rotate, hinge, and our leg can extend just a little bit. Double knee joint, and cross foot, it's on a uh, double peg and swivel thing, and of course you got the toe joint. Finally, the sticker sheets also seem pretty well. If you don't want to use the decals, I think the sticker sheets will do a pretty decent job in hiding itself for the most part. Uh, I'm still going to probably paint most of the little details on, but there are just a few little bits with very thin hair, like black hairline uh, drawings, and that I'm going to stick with the sticker sheet. Uh, it looks pretty awesome, doesn't take too long to build, and he poses pretty well. You can do a lot of different articulations with him, and he shouldn't fall over. This is a really, really good 1 6 scale figure for the price that it's being sold for. Most of the shops are selling these for almost 400 or 380, but the shop I got it from Footly was having it for 348, so if you think that's a good price, and it is, some SH figures cost that price at 112 scale, this is a definite pickup if you're a Star Wars fan and you have uh, and you have a hobby of collecting 1-6 scale figures. If you have the Hot Toy stuff and you just want to do a little bit of army building but of course the Hot Toy stuff is too expensive, or perhaps you have Slideshow or any of the other sort of that this sort of scale Stormtroopers, this is a really cheap option, option to go with. Maybe you buy two or three or four and um, after you build the model kit you'll need to keep one of the boxes and you should be able to put like four or five Stormtroopers in one of these model kit boxes so that'll save you some space. Just chuck away the extra instructions in boxes. Hey hey! Accessory count is also pretty decent, just like the small one you got the three guns and different scales. What I don't like about the hand accessory though is that you're swapping the fingers instead of pulling out the entire arm just to swap that in and out. That's a little bit sucky. This is one of those model kits I wanted to get for a while now and um, you know I was expecting it to be decent but I was still pleasantly surprised so if you want to get some stormtroopers at this size then the model Bandai model kit is definitely something you must consider. If you enjoyed this video and found it useful, please consider clicking the like button, subscribe button if you haven't done so already, and of course share this people with other Star Wars or Model Kit fans out there. As always, you can support this channel by turning ad block off, but if you don't want to do that but still want to support this channel, you can head over to Patreon there, hey, any support is appreciated. But as always, you don't have to do any of that, take care, have a nice day, and of course, may the force be with you.